Hi, I'm Glenn Abenza, and welcome to the Pulse, which stands for preaching using love and scriptural evidences. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why it is important to discuss life after death. That's coming up today on the Pulse. Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time on the Pulse, it is a pleasure to have met you. If you want to learn more about the Bible, please do not hesitate to hit like. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing. And if you want to get more videos coming soon, please hit the notification bell below. Okay, I know everyone is curious about what life after death is. Perhaps what brought you here is your interest in knowing more about heaven and hell, or your desire to go to heaven after death. But before I get this started, I would like to make it crystal clear that we will only use what the Bible reveals about heaven. The Apostle Peter in 2 Peter 1 3 says, As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. The Bible is absolutely complete as it reveals to us everything we need to know, and of course what we need to do to go to heaven after death. False teachings, speculations, and heresies are not going to be given of any importance in this discussion, as the Apostle John, Revelation 22, 18-19, warns us, saying, For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So as we begin our discussion on life after death, let us only honor what God speaks in the scriptures. That is why Peter speaks to the Jewish Christians in 1 Peter 4.11, saying, If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it, as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. We can quote some relevant statements of renowned people and faithful men of God in this world only for further explanation, if necessity arises, for as long as they are not in contrary with what God states in the Bible. Rest assured, God's word, the truth, will always prevail on this channel, as I have a bountiful source of materials authored by the sound Bible scholars and faithful Bible teachers. Well, mankind has long been fascinated with the subject of life after death. Such fascination has given rise to such things as interest in the occult, speculation concerning the timing and the events surrounding the return of Jesus Christ. It also has created much confusion among those who are Christians who have every reason to look forward to the future with certainty and great expectation. Though the Bible has much to say about what will occur after death and in the future, many have not studied the Bible carefully on this subject. Their knowledge may be limited to what they have heard or seen on religious TV or radio programs, or their understanding may be based upon a point of view that is taught by their religion's creed, rather than the Bible itself. It is my prayer that this series of lessons may help increase our understanding on what the Bible itself actually teaches us on the subject. In this lesson, I wish to answer the question, what is the value of such a study? But first, it may help to define a couple of terms. The first one is eschatology. The systematic study of that which the Bible has revealed regarding the future is called eschatology. The term comes from two words, eschatos, meaning last things, logos, meaning word or discourse. Therefore, eschatology is a discourse or study about the last things. The field of eschatology can be divided into two general areas. Individual eschatology pertains to what happens to the individual between death and the final return of Christ, otherwise known as the intermediate state. The second area is general eschatology, which pertains to what will happen when and after Christ's final coming. This relates to what we might call our eternal destiny. In this series of lessons, we will consider both fields of eschatology, beginning with individual eschatology, because for much of mankind, their death precedes the coming of Christ. But what is the value of such a study besides answering our curiosity? 
Is such a study really practical? Consider then the value of such a study. First, it encourages us to live that the blessings will be ours. The Lord has promised wonderful blessings to those who endure, such as what James says in James 1.12, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. It is entirely proper for the believer to seek whatever blessings God has prepared for the righteous. That's why Peter says, in 1 Peter 3, 8-12, says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as waters, be tender-hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil, or reviling for reviling, but in the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called for this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Second, it furnishes a stimulus and a theme for evangelism. Knowing what lay ahead for sinful mankind motivated Paul to preach. That is why he says in 2 Corinthians 5, 10-11, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the tale of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. It should also motivate sinners to obey, as the Bible says in Acts 17.30, saying, Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. The third value is that it helps one to answer inquirers and to quiet deceivers. Many are sincerely interested, and we should be able to give them the correct teaching. That is why Peter says in 1 Peter 3.15, saying, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. But there are many teaching their false doctrines, and we should be able to refute them. That is why Paul tells Titus in his letter to him in Titus 1, 9-11, saying, Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict. The fourth value is that it helps to stimulate prayer. The importance of prayer to the Christians can never be overemphasized, just like what we can learn from the persistent widow in Luke 18, 1 for it, saying, then he spoke to a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose hearts, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard men. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard men, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? Meditating upon the end times can stimulate serious and watchful prayer. Let us take note what Peter says to the Jewish Christians in 1 Peter 4, 7, saying, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. The fifth value is that it can strengthen love for one another. Let's read carefully 1 Peter 4, 7 to 10, saying, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling, as each one has received a gift. Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Increasing our understanding for what awaits the faithful can spur greater devotion and service to one another, and that service in turn strengthens our love for one another. The sixth value is that it can cause more glory to be given to God. Note carefully Romans 2 verse 4, where we learn that the goodness of God leads men to repent. 
The more we learn of God's goodness, which He has prepared for those who love and obey Him, the more we will repent, resulting in the glory of God. And lastly, it can increase incentive to be steadfast in the faith. Consider what Peter says in 1 Peter 5, 8-9, saying, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a rolling lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. The more we strengthen the inner conviction that hell is real, that it is Satan's sinister purpose to devour as many people as possible, the more incentive we will have to remain steadfast in the faith. So far from being an impractical subject of the study, the fruits concerning the last things can be of inestimable value to our present life. As John wrote in 1 John 3, verses 2 to 3, our hope in the one who is coming and what that means for us can help to purify ourselves. And in our next study, we shall begin looking at individual eschatology by examining different attitudes held towards death itself. If it's your first time on this channel, please hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell below for more videos soon. Thank you.